What's going on, guys? Waco from Revolution here with my man Harris from MBNF. How, How are, are you, Wade? Very good, very good. How are you? In incidentally, if you guys have uh, never met Harris, he's just one of the coolest dudes in this industry. I absolutely love him. Don't believe guy. him. He's exaggerating. It's, it's true, it's true. <laughs> and, and I'm not just saying this because it's the first uh, meeting of the morning, the second day of Geneva Watch Dance, where we're both wearing sunglasses because we're on the terrace of the beautiful Beau Rivage on the presidential suite. We turned on the water fountain for you guys. Thank you, sir. Uh, but Welcome. we're here to discuss a really cool watch, and that is the new version of the split escapement in titanium in an Evo case. So, but before we go into that, let's talk about the watch that kind of inspired the split escapement? Yes, absolutely. Harris, take it away, sir. The Perpetual Calendar. The LM Perpetual are designed by the one and only Stephen McDonald, the, the genius, uh, the living genius of watchmaking. When he designed that Perpetual Calendar for us, he ran into a problem because part of the brief was we want the flying balance wheel on the face of the watch, like all the legacy machines. Right. The issue was the Perpetual Calendar is so complex that there was literally no space to position the entire escapement. So what did Steven do? He had this incredible idea of putting just the, the bounce wheel on the front and then removing or removing the rest of the escapement to the back of the movement. Right. That is practically 14 millimeters away. That is not <laughs> what you do at watchmaking school. It's forbidden because it's a huge distance. Right. And basically there's a shaft going through the entire movement linking the two. That's incredible. So if you look at that on top guys there, that's the hairspring and the balance wheel. And of course this signature balance bridge. And normally, that's engaged directly with exactly. the escapement, right? Exactly. You never have a watch where you have the balance on one side and the escapement on the other side, but that was what was necessary in order to configure this beautiful array of subdials that are the indications for the LM Perpetual Calendar, which is, in Correct. my estimation, and I'm not just saying this because I own one, probably one of the most beautiful perpetual calendars ever invented. And this is Harris is wearing the, the OG, OG, OG version, yeah. right? Exactly. And, this is, and this is the Evo version. So actually what's really interesting is to see that the Evo version is quite a bit thinner. Uh, there's al also like almost no bezel to this watch as well. And it's made in titanium, so it's actually quite light and wearable, right? It is, yes. So let's go from there to uh, the new version of the, the Split Escapement. Split Escapement. Right? Yeah. So about the Evo range, if you like, yeah. as, you, as you mentioned, uh, we started with the, the classic Perpetuals and the classic LMs. And at one point, actually, because Max required it, we said we need to make one of these watches that you could actually, that can follow you into the pool. Right. He's, he lives in Dubai, uh, a lot of things happen in the water. Right. Um, and, and that's why the first Evo piece was the LM Perpetual Evo. Right. What did we do to make it Evo? We made 80 meters of water resistance. There's a screw down crown, a zirconium or titanium case, bezel free design, lots of super luminova on the dial. I love that. And inside, you don't see it, there's what we call the flex ring, which is like a shock absorber. Oh, that's cool. Protects the movement from vertical and lateral shocks. Nice. So it's like a, an SUV version of our classic LMs. Right. So we started with the Perpetual. Uh, then we moved to, a few months ago, the Sequential Chronograph, which was actually launched as an Evo piece. Right. That's the Sequential you see right now. This watch is, is uh, also like very uh, entertaining to me because hmm. like I know Max has an aversion to second hands. He right, does. Right? It's, our, it's our first yeah. ever second hands. <laughs> and you have two. And we have two. It's like, you know, go, go full blast. Exactly. exactly. So, yeah, it was, I guess, a way to get over that little uh, aversion, yes, aversion exactly. to, to second hands. I love the fact that it's, it's basically two chronographs in, in, in one watch, right? Exactly. Two chronographs with a single movement, of course. But you have an entire chronograph here on the right with its seconds and 30 minute counter, another one here on the left, and you can use them in a multitude of modes. You can use them either independently, if I start and stop the one here on the left, for example, I can reset with its own start, stop, and reset button. Right. I can do exactly the same here on the right if I start and stop that one. Right. But there's a fifth button here, which we call the twin inverter, which basically inverts whatever status both chronographs are in. That's cool. If they're both stopped as they are now, Typical situation, two race cars on a start line. Right. I press the twin inverter. They both start. Both start. Amazing. And that gives us like a super split second. Yeah. Because I can now stop, for example, the first car. Right. I have the timing of that first car and then stop the second one. And you have a very legible reading. That's awesome. Last but not least, let's have a single car now on a track doing laps. Right. I start the first car or the first lap. That's running here on this first chronograph. What you want to do when you finish that first lap, lap is stop the first lap and start a second one instantaneously. instantaneously. Right. That's what the twin inverter does. Boom. I press here, first lap, you have ample yeah, time to read it, yes. second lap is started. That's fantastic. And you can do that indefinitely for 100 laps if you want. Amazing. So that so, is a yeah. second Evo case uh, watch. And exactly. Now we're going to talk about the latest. Yes. So the latest is uh, what we call the split escapement, what we were mentioning before. 
So a uh, less complex movement, obviously. Here you just have the date and the power reserve. But to me, a beautiful execution. Yeah, absolutely. We've also twisted the entire movement about 30 degrees. Nice. The original OG version was symmetrical, if you like, uh, with the time at noon. Here now it's moved uh, towards the, the right. This is what we call the worldwide edition, if you like, which is available with all our retailers in this icy cool blue dial. We say available, but you know, there's well, a lot yeah. of demand going on. Yeah. We'll be making about 20 uh, movements this year, and then on a full year, about 40. Wow. So, so yes, it is limited. Watches, yes. It's not formally limited, right. but the capacity is what it is. And then? Uh, and then, uh, because we are also opening a number of MBNF labs, and one of the first is Beverly Hills. Wow. We have a specific Beverly Hills edition, 25 pieces in this black dial plate with metallic blue colors. Stunning. That's a beautiful watch. And also, like, a uh, shout out to our buddies, um, you know, Greg and John Simonian, who we love, mm -hmm. and who actually were Same one here. of the very first uh, champions. Of one of the know. very, very first champions of the brand. They were one of the retailers who supported Max by, you know, pre-ordering uh, some of the first uh, HM1s. And by the way, the other two uh, MBNF labs opening this year happen to be Paris and Singapore, Michael right. Tay. And they were also and part of those yeah. very, well, yeah. earliest supporters yes. of, of MBNF. So Amazing. It's, it's cool. So I guess the, the last question I have for you, because, uh, you know, there's so much demand now like for hmm. these watches. It's, I mean, it's, it's so massively outstrips supply. Yes. But if you don't allocate watches eventually to new clients, you kind of don't grow the base, right? Like, so how are you Absolutely. guys handling that? You know? uh, very good question. And right. we are struggling with that, to be honest. We had a big uh, meeting just before the Geneva Watch Days internally where we spent hours on that specific question. Right. How do we do that? How do we, of course, remain loyal to our very loyal customers who have been supporting us from the very beginning? They are demanding watches from us. But yes, how do we bring new guys in? We're trying to figure that out. On a piece like the LM Split Escapement, not the Beverly Hills, which is limited, but this one, which is not limited, that gives us a bit of leeway. Right. Of course, there's, there's wait times involved, but it does mean that we can promise this piece to also new customers right. and not just the loyal ones. It's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, to be honest. We're trying to increase capacity as well. How many uh, pieces for the Beverly Hills? 25. Yeah. It's going to fly. Harris, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Pleasure, for guys. Cheers. Bye.